Malaria kills over half a million children each year uh, and affects the lives of hundreds of millions of others. And the good news is that over the past few years we've been finding ways to control malaria increasingly successfully, but it does rely on the drugs being effective. And in the past when people have mounted big malaria campaigns, they failed because the parasite has become resistant to the drugs. And now we're starting to see this with the drug that's currently being used, artemisinin. And this emerging drug resistance threatens to destabilize malaria control worldwide. We need to map artemisinin resistance in order to understand where it is. If we don't know where artemisinin resistance is, so how far it's spread and how quickly it's changing, we don't know where to intervene in terms of um, containment and indeed whether containment is still um, what we should be trying to do. So we need to define almost the borders of where drug resistance has spread to. This problem of parasite drug resistance arises from the immense ability of the parasite to adapt in an evolutionary way to whatever interventions we use. It, it changes genetically. And here at the Sanger Institute, we've been developing technologies for high throughput genome sequencing that allow us to look at those changes in the parasite population at the level of the whole genome. This gives us an unprecedented view of what's going on in the parasite population. Having sequenced the genomes of over a thousand parasites from around the world, we can start to see very clear patterns that relate to where they're geographically located. And these allow us to characterize those artemisinin-resistant parasites, to develop new genetic tools to monitor their spread, and ultimately to understand the mechanisms by which the parasite is resisting the drugs. We've sequenced the genomes of parasites from Africa and from Asia, and we can see their patterns. And a very striking and strange pattern emerged in Western Cambodia, where it was plain that the parasites were doing something different. Put very simply, there are specific strains of parasite that are starting to run rampant in the Cambodian parasite population. The range of data that we're collecting in Cambodia ranges from qualitative data, meaning um, in-depth interviews, focus group discussions, through to survey data, so where we're um, using questionnaires and collecting information. We have a team of social scientists, and it's to try and get a better understanding of particular at-risk populations, the mobile migrant population, who are we think, particularly at risk of getting malaria, and so they're at risk for themselves, but they're also, we think, the at-risk population for spreading drug resistance. We are interviewing people to try and find out um, what their knowledge and their practices are with regards to anti-malarial drug use. One of the, I guess, biggest enemies has been artemisinin monotherapy. Our testnate, taken on its own, makes it much more vulnerable to drug resistance. If you have a partner drug, then the partner drug can kill off any parasites which might be resistant. We would like patients who have malaria to have a diagnosis and then to take a full course of an artemisinin combination therapy. What, in fact, people often take are cocktails of drugs. So this is a, a cocktail, meaning it's a little plastic bag that contains usually five, but my record was up to 11 different tablets and people would take that as a single dose and as you can see that's probably an antibiotic it usually contains some paracetamol antihistamines steroids and the concern is that we have low doses of either antimalarials or antibiotics in those packets controlling malaria is a big problem uh, and it's not going to be solved overnight it's only going to happen if we get the right building blocks in place and one of those is effective surveillance of the problem. And in particular, in this case, surveillance of where the parasites are becoming resistant to the treatments we're using. 
And now we have some great new technologies we can apply to that problem. So we're very focused on the near term. How can we turn our discoveries into technologies that will be of utility for field teams in controlling the problem and at a global level for policy makers in deciding what to do next?